Hello people, in this video let us look at the uh, fractures of the nasal bone. Okay, we are concerned only about nasal bone here. Basically, where exactly are we? We are in fracture of middle third of face. Okay, specifically we are trying to focus on the nasal bone fracture. So, let us correct this. Fractures of nasal bone. Okay, we look only at the fractures of the nasal bone. So, in the middle third of face, what and all um, are there? You have the nasal bone, you have the nasal septum, you have the orbit, you have the zygomatic arch, you have etc. Right? So, basically these are the main things you have to know. Right? So, but there are so many fractures here, but we will focus on what happens if no nasal bone, what type of fractures will be there. Look at this. Face, as such face, upper third you have, uh, what and all is there? Upper third, guys, touch your upper third of your face and say frontal bone. Orbital, supraorbital ridge, frontal bone. Yeah. Middle third, what and all can get affected? Middle nose, uh, nose, uh, nasal bone, nasal septum, uh, orbit, zygomatic arch, maxilla. See, maxilla, you have lefort fractures. Anyways, um, uh, these we have, there is separate video. Okay, in the playlist, look at that. Then lower third. Okay, we we'll look at lower third also. Lower third of the face, what and all uh, will, is there, guys? Lower third of the face. Lower third, okay. Lower third, alveolar process, symphysis, okay. So, all this will get affected, right. So, that will be lower third. But what are we concerned about here? Here we are looking at middle third of face and in that also, we are looking at nasal bone only. First of all, what? where is nasal bone? See, nasal bone is here, okay. First, let us look at the location of the nasal bone. Look at this diagram. Yeah. So, nasal bone fractures, this is what we want to look at. Let us look at what we have here. Nasal bone fracture is most common because of the projection of the nose on the face. So, that is why nasal bone fracture is pretty common. Okay. So, what is it? It is common. Why? Because the nose is projected from the face. Now, why does this happen? So, it can happen, happen from uh, some kind of a trauma, right? So, traumatic forces, how can they apply? They can apply either from the front or from the side, right? So, in this photo, is it from front or from side? What do you think? So, traumatic forces can come from front or side. This looks more like side, okay. See, we have already covered this nasal septal fractures, we have already covered. So, if you want that Septum fractures, go and look at the septum fractures, the Dargeway fracture and uh, Chevalet fracture and all that. Okay, here we are looking at nasal bone fractures. So, where were we? So, nasal bone fractures types. So, types of nasal bone fractures, let, nasal bone, nasal fractures or nasal bone fractures. Okay, depressed and angulated. There are only two that you have to know. Wow, let us look at this photo here. Depressed and angulated. Okay, let us all look at that. Okay, so the first one they are saying A is normal. So, this is normal. Okay. Then B is frontal blow causing depressed fracture or open fracture. So, this is normal. A is normal. This one is depressed fracture or open book fracture. C is lateral blow causing deviation of the nasal bridge or depression of one of the nasal bone. Again, they are using the word depression here. But anyways, you know here, frontal blow will cause depressed fracture and uh, lateral blow can cause angulated fracture, okay. So, let us try to focus on this one. <coughs> it is not difficult to uh, understand, guys. If somebody punches you from the front, what will happen? It will get depressed. And if somebody punches you from the side, what will happen? Angulated, as simple as that. So, it will go to one side, that will become angulated, right. So, basically, look at the photo here. This looks like angulated, right? This looks angulated, isn't it? So, lateral blue. So, what do we have to look at? Depressed and angulated. What is this photo? Let us look at. Let us try to understand. Fractured nasal bone arrow seen in the radiograph. Here you can see kind of a irregular margin here to show that there is fracture of the nasal bone. Okay, so basically open book fracture is depressed. Okay, this is another terminology they are using. Frontal blow, 
the uh, lower part of the nasal bone is thinner it will give easy it will give way it is called as open book fracture nasal septum is collapsed nasal bones splayed out okay so basically if you give even more force there will be even more problem you can look at that it go it may go on to affect the maxilla and the nasal dorsum etc now coming to angulated lateral blow this much you are clear right lateral will cause angle obviously front if you exactly punch it will his nose will get depressed okay now coming to angulated <clears throat> a lateral blow may cause unilateral depression of nasal bone on the same side or may fracture both the nasal bones and septum with deviation of nasal bridge obviously this is deviate it can cause deviation etc it is angulated so what else you want to know here so these nasal bone fractures can be accompanied com, accompanied with fractures of the nasal septum etc there may be septal hematoma etc now what are the clinical features in this let us look at the clinical features clinical features of nasal bone fracture what do you think swelling swelling of nose so it will appear within few hours and may obscure details of examination peri orbital ecchymosis tenderness or even pain right nasal deformity nose may be depressed okay the whole of the nasal pyramid deviated that's also possible crepitus mobility of fractured fragments there can be mobility of the fractured fragments yes crepitus and mobility of fractured fragments there can be epistaxis that is nose bleed nasal obstruction nasal obstruction basically due to septal injury or hematoma lacerations on the nasal skin lacerations of nasal skin right so from inside these bones and cartilage also may get exposed okay so basically this is about the clinical features of nasal bone fracture what and all will be there swelling tenderness that is kind of uh, tenderness is something that you touch and it's tender that is you can say this person whoever comes in with nasal frac bone fracture they'll have pain they'll have swelling deformity epistaxis they can have nasal obstruction they can have lacerations so let us say one guy is there he got punched in his nose <clears throat> so this is nose now it is deviated and there is swelling he's having nose bleed epistaxis there is obstruction because of septal hematoma let's say is having obstruction he can have laceration etc so let's move on now to diagnosis of nasal bone fracture diagnosis so basically how will you do physical examination then you will do x ray x rays may or may not show the fracture they say patient should not be dismissed as having no fracture if the x ray do not re reveal it interesting so x rays should include waters view right and left lateral views and occlusal view wow that means like four things waters view you know that waters view right that the chin they keep on the touching the wall isn't it so right and left lateral view that is uh, right profile lateral profile occlusal occlusal view what is this occlusal view uh, look at this one this is actually waters view okay this is waters view okay coming to occlusal view it is intra oral radiographic techniques okay they're talking it more about it in dentistry usually this word right occlusion they use it for the temporomandibular joint whether the teeth and the, the mandible they are occluding let's move on now so this is diagnosis so this is a uh, this is after he got fixed so nice he looks right fracture after manual correction this is manual correction so let us look at the treatment now simple fractures uh, they don't need treatment uh, if they if there is no displacement so then otherwise they need open or closed reduction now need to we need to see what that is 
one thing you should understand is within 5 to 7 days it is better to do the reduction because um, after that what will happen edema will be there and it will interfere with uh, the uh, reduction procedure okay it interferes uh, with accurate reduction by closed methods so let's understand what this closed reduction means okay depressed fractures of nasal bones can be reduced by slight blunt elevator guided by digital manipulation from outside so basically they're just using some straight blunt elevator guide with the help of some guidance and they're fixing this depressed fracture okay and what is this open reduction this is indicated only when closed method fails okay this seem to be some kind of a open technique you're opening it up and fixing it kind of a thing closed is where it is closed and you're just uh, uh, putting some straight blunt elevator and uh, guided by digital manipulation from outside digital means what fingers manipulation from outside so i'm guessing it is finger digital manipulation so basically um, so basically they are saying that if there is a displaced nasal bridge you can just reduce it by firm digital pressure in the opposite direction okay and then um, they will use if there is an, some impacted fragments okay impacted fragments if they are there they will uh, disimpact them with valsham or ars asks forceps before the realignment so guys how will they remove some bones fragments which are impacted that means they are blocking kind of a thing they will use this valsham forceps or this asch ash uh, forceps okay so all these are in closed reduction guys we are discussing what now closed reduction only right so just using these forceps and trying to fix type of a thing so if there is any septal hematoma you will have to drain it then uh, if it is a simple fracture there's no requirement of intranasal packing unstable fractures they require intranasal packing and external splintage also is required so to support right so that's about closed reduction that is from outside itself you try to fix everything using so many types of forceps L blunt elevator do you know what that is straight blunt elevator something like this guys straight blunt elevator okay this is the main one they have mentioned here in closed reduction so open reduction when will they do open reduction they'll do only if uh, this closed reduction does not work open reduction what they are saying here is that uh, uh, healed nasal deformities resulting from nasal trauma if they have already healed then they can correct it by rhinoplasty or septo rhinoplasty so guys this completes nasal bone fracture look at this we have tried to focus only on the nasal bone fracture we have not bothered about the nasal septum that is separate video is there of the fracture of that so uh, basically in the middle third of phase what and all can get affected nasal bone septum nasal nasal orbit zygomatic arch orbital floor all this will come in the middle third of phase so nasal bone shown here right and uh, what are the types you have the depressed and the angulated so depressed is frontal impact and uh, angulated is uh, lateral impact so what are the clinical features we told you then uh, diagnosis basically you will examine by physically itself you can tell x-ray may or may not show you have they have told what is view right la left lateral view occlusal view my god four uh, x-ray things they have said then as a treatment what did they say basically as a treatment they have closed reduction open reduction okay so closed reduction they said what and all you will use straight blunt elevator then for to remove impaction you will use valsham septum uh, uh, valsham forceps and ash forceps right good and open reduction what did they say whenever closed doesn't work if it is healed blah 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 so you will do what you will do rhinoplasty septo rhinoplasty that's it so you should operate all this immediately so that you can do a closed procedure okay so details about this you will have to look at uh, from other textbooks so this is just overview of nasal bone fracture guys when it comes to this leforte fracture basically here if you see this line okay this point here guys are you able to see which point you are getting confused with the color is it affecting the nasal bone this point here looks like even nasal bone it's going through right that is the leforte the second type let's read this 
See, this Lefort tooth, that is the pyramidal fracture, passes through the root of nose, lacrimal bone, floor of orbit, upper part of maxillary sinus and pterygoid plate. So, they are talking about root of nose, okay. And even the Lefort 3, right, it also passes via the root of nose here. So, these two pass through this root of nose, 2 and 3. The pyramidal one and the other, uh, the three, what is three called? Craniofacial disjunction. It's kind of separating the facial bone from cranial bone. So, craniofacial disjunction itself, it is the C1. So, this is also going through root of nose. B is also going via root of nose. So, if you want, if they ask nasal bone fracture, probably this can be mentioned, not sure. So, we are done with fractures of nasal bone. That's all for now. Bye-bye. Just remember the dangerous area of face, right? This portion, middle third of face, all this very important because you know that these veins, facial veins, um, they drain, you know, valveless they are and they can carry the infection back into the cavernous sinus, right? So that is why these, this, these uh, things are very important for exam. So how is the infection going to go from facial vein to pterygoid venous plexus to emissary vein to cavernous sinus, okay?